morning, everybody. Dennis Engelbrecht with the Legacy Series of Digging Deeper. Today, I want to talk about decision making. And of course, there's a lot of decision making that goes on at every company and certainly in every construction company. You know, management theory, at least as I learned it a long time ago, basically states that decisions should be made at the lowest possible level. Now, that doesn't mean all decisions are made at the ground level, but at the ground level, that's where you're close enough to the work and close enough to the customer to be able to make those decisions if you have the proper context, preparation, training, authority, etc., all of those things. But basic management theory is the most efficient and the best way uh, is to drive decision making downward to the lowest possible level. So there are several elements in play. Uh, for probably why this doesn't happen in, in many companies. But, you know, the first element is power. You know, sometimes we or our people uh, want the power. We want the power of being able to make the decisions, maybe all the decisions or at least all the important decisions. Uh, and power is probably not a great motivator for determining where decisions are made um, because, it, it, you know, power in and of itself is not one of those sort of pure motivational elements. You know, power is more um, greedy, if, if you will. Um, trust is another element that's at play. You know, we, we'd like to drive decision making down sometimes, but we don't trust the decisions that will be made as we do that. So then they bounce back up to us to be able to have to make those decisions. Now to improve these things, to improve both the power dynamic and the trust dynamic, job clarity is important. You know, what decision making is expected by each person you know, in their particular role, in their particular job. I think in a lot of cases, we don't make that clear. Uh, and therefore, a person might be hesitant to make decisions because they don't know whether it's in their purview uh, to be making those particular calls. You know, is this too important? Or uh, am I not considered, you know, worthy enough or smart enough to, to be able to make these, these calls in terms of decisions? Uh, I think another important aspect to help drive down your decision making is clarity around the company mission, vision, and values. Uh, even beyond that, it's you know annual or monthly goals and objectives. Um, certainly, if a person understands those well, that gives them the context for making good decisions and allows you to drive again drive that decision making down toward the lower level. Uh, so that person, you know, down at the lower level, not only has the situational aspects of decisions, but it knows the big picture that those decisions fall in. You know, it, if I make a decision this way, is it in line with our mission? Is it in line with our values? Is it in line with our visions? Will it help us meet our goals and objectives uh, or not? Uh, and that allows people, when people understand those things, they're better decision makers. So if you keep those things secret, your goals and objectives, uh, of course, that doesn't give the people tools with which to make decisions and allow you to drive that decision making down into the organization. There's also people development, right? H have you given them the training, uh, both to understand the role, understand the mission, vision, and all that sort of stuff, but understand how to make decisions and how to make them well, how to put them in context, how to, you know, give them a tool, you know, the plus minus columns, you know, right? What are the pluses? What are the minuses to make a value decision on whether it should be a go or a no go uh, on a decision? Um, some of the things that happens when you don't drive decision downward, um, you know, we experience a lot of micromanagement. Now, the higher level managers get involved in the detail at the lower levels so that they can make the decisions because they can't make them, you know, without knowledge. So that's really where micromanagement comes from. If the people higher up in the organization got to make the decisions at the lower level, well, then they end up having to micromanage 
And that, of course, is counterproductive, uh, both from a time and efficiency standpoint, but it's counterproductive to allow other people, it, it sort of cycles, rather than allowing them to make decisions in the future. Micromanagement usurps that power and, and, and effectiveness and, and tends to make them make less decisions. Um, and don't take for granted uh, that everybody knows what decisions they should be making or, or knows how to make those decisions. So training is really key to that. Um, you know, and finally, uh, decisions, when they're all done at the top, create a bottleneck, uh, which slows everything down, slows down operations. Think about it as a job site decision. Well, if the superintendent or the project manager can't make that decision, well, now they've got to wait. And the people on the other end of that decision, by the way, have to wait as well. And, you know, senior managers don't always get around to those decisions on a timely basis. And certainly in the case of micromanagement, you end up with that bottleneck. And that bottleneck slows things down and makes your company less effective. So think about what's happening in your company with your decision making. Is it being made at the lowest level possible? Have you done the things that allow that to happen? Dennis Engelbrecht, Digging Deeper.